Hello, my friends. In this tutorial, I will show you how to create user authentication using React.js and Firebase sign up and sign in methods. Also, I will explain the protected root concept and how to sign out a user. So let's start. I have a clean React application here. So first of all, I will create a home page with the form layout. Let's create a pages folder with the home JSX file and add some basic structure inside. It will be a section and title for now. Next, I want to display my homepage, so I should install the React Router DOM library and create the very first routers tree. I need to import browser router, roots and root here. Now I can compose them and declare a homepage as a default root. To do it, just pass the index prop to root with the homepage element. Don't forget to import the page and use it as an element of the root. Our homepage is successfully rendered, as you can see on the screen. So, next step is creating a form markup. Add a form tag first, a legend to declare a form title, and a field set to group our input fields. Then create a list, and every item of this list will contain a label and input element. And I want you to know that I wrote CSS in advance to save a little time, but don't worry, you can repeat after me without styling or using any CSS you want. Please note that I use a type password for the second input to hide the user's password symbols during typing. After that, let's make a sign up button. I define it with the type button to prevent the default form submit action, because the default button type is submit. Also, we need to allow users to use the login method here. So, to implement it, I will declare a state that I'll call is sign up active. and the simple handler function a little below. This function will switch our isSignUpActive flag to true or false on every call. Now we need to call it somewhere. So I'm going to create an empty link element at the bottom of our form and pass the function as an onClick handler. After that, let's split our form titles into two. The first is for the signUpActive state and the second is for signIn. Just duplicate it, replace the render condition and text. Sign up will be the default here, and now it works. The same actions to split our link elements and buttons. The login link should be visible if the sign up state is active. Let's check how it looks now. OK. And we also need to render different action buttons in the same way. Now make sure it works and yes, it looks well. The second step here is to create a Firebase application and integrate it into our React app. Open the Firebase console and press create a project. After that, type a project name and click continue. I disabled Google Analytics because we don't need it now and our project is ready. Now I need to pick a new web application in the console and prompt an app title. Press the register app, wait a second and go to the next step. This is a very important part now. We need to install Firebase to our React app and save all these credentials. I'm going to add a new Firebase file to the root folder of my project and paste all Firebase settings inside. OK, save it and go back to the Firebase console. Open the Build tab on the left bar, pick Authentication and click Get Started. Now choose Email Password Sign-in method, press Enable and Save. Get back to our Firebase settings and import the GetOuth method from Firebase Outs. We need to create an auth instance and export it to use it all over the app. OK. Now I would like to move all this sensitive data from the Firebase config to the .env file. I strongly recommend you hide it from the straight access. Since I use vid as my project builder, I need to call every variable with vid prefix. But if you use Create React App or something else, the way of naming might be different here. I'll speed up the process a little. 
Now we can read these variables from .env file using import.meta.env construction. And this also works only with weep. If you use create React app, you should probably read this as a process.env. Well, if I didn't mess up anywhere, our project must continue to work and it actually works. Good. So, now I would like to work with sign in and sign up method. Let's import the create user with email and password method from Firebase Auth and declare a new sign up handler function below. Inside this function, I will call the create user with email and password method with three arguments. Let's take a look at them. First, the auth instance. We can import from the Firebase config. But we still don't have email and password here, so I am going to add a new state to save the user's email value, and another one for the password. The initial value of both states will be an empty string. A user with email and password method will register a new user in the Firebase console, and we can do something useful with the user's data inside the function or catch an error. But I'm going to use a simple console log here, because this is just an example and we don't need any actions here. Now we should make our inputs controlled by the state. So I will create a handle email change function to set an email value. And a similar one for the password. Just copy and paste the current handler and replace the name and the set state function. Now let's path them to our inputs. We should call them when a change event is triggered. The last action here before we create the first user is to add the onclick handler to the sign up button. Okay, we are ready to create the first user. Just enter an email and password, click sign up, and our console log show us a new user. To make sure that the user was successfully created, go back to the Firebase console, open the authentication page, and it's here. Great. Also, we don't need to call the sign up method if the email or password is empty. I just added a simple verification on the top of our handler function, but you can do it more complex if you want. It works. Next, I will create a sign in method to allow users to log in to our service. Import the sign in with email and password method from the Firebase auth and create a new handle. I will call it handle sign in. I can copy and paste our sign up function because it will be almost the same. I just need to replace a callable method. Pass handle sign in as an on click prop to the sign in button and let's try to log in. Enter our email and password and press sign in and here we go. We were successfully logged in. User IDs are equal as you can see. Now is the time for protected root concept. Basically, if we have an authentication process in our app, we want to hide some pages or data from the straight access. In other words, if the user doesn't have an account or is not logged into it, we don't want to show him some private pages. Let's create a new private page it will contain just only section and title for now. And add it to the roots tree with a specific path. It's gonna be private. And don't forget to import it. Now we can easily open this page just because there are no rules to protect it from outer access. So I will create a components folder and add a protected root component inside. This component receives a children prop and a user prop. In fact, the implementation of the protected root is quite simple. In our case, we just want to check if the user exists. If it's true, we just return children. If there is no user, navigate to the home page. That's it. Now go back to our roots. At this moment, we do not store the user anywhere. And this is a problem because we need to pass it as a prop to the protected root. I'm going to import the on state change Firebase method and call it inside the use effect hook right here on the top level of our app. This function is some kind of event listener that will listen to the user's auth state changes. It means when a user successfully creates an account or login, this function calls a callback that we passed as a second argument. 
Inside this callback, we have access to the user, so we can store it somewhere. In this example, I'm going to use the useState hook to store our user. But it is also possible to do it with React Context API or Redux or whatever you want. The initial user value will be null. Inside the onOutStateChange callback, set the user if it exists. And set null if it logs out, for example. Don't forget to clean up your useEffect hook. This cleanup function will call after a component unmounts. It's time to try to use protected root. We need to import it and then wrap our private page and pass the user prop. Also, I need to import the auth instance here. Now we are ready to test the protected root. The first attempt to open the private page failed, and it's okay. Then we try to log in and open it again. But unfortunately, it redirects us to the home page. But why? The thing is, the root tree is created once on the URL chain. So if we try to look at our user inside the protected root, it always be null, because this is an initial user value. In fact, this is the reason why we should write some extra logic here. Actually, this problem has many solutions, but I suggest adding one more state here and call it is fetching. The default is fetching value will be true. And only after getting the current user state, we will replace it with false. While we fetch in, our app will return the simple loading component here. You can use beautiful loading animation instead. And now we can try to open the protected root again. Log in to our account and try to open a private page. The private page was successfully opened. But there is one more concern. We should forbid access to the home page for users who were successfully logged in. So let's write some logic inside our home page. The render condition will be similar to the protected root. We just pass a user prop to the page and check if the user exists now. If so, we should navigate him to the private page. Let's import navigate from React Router DOM and pass a user prop. And now it works correctly. The last action here is to add the ability to sign out. It's pretty simple to implement. Just import the signout function from the Firebase auth and call it inside a custom handler. I will call it handle signout and also use only console lock here, but you can trigger different actions. Pass this handler to the button, and now let's check the full flow. Sign out first, and then we are not able to open the private page before login. But after login, we are automatically navigated to the private page. Works perfect. Subscribe if you like it.